In this episode, we're going to start diving into events, what events mean, how you can use them towards your own conversion optimization strategy, and ultimately how we define events in the world of Google Tag Manager and our e-commerce sites. First off, what are events? Events mean many different things, and we all can make assumptions on what, what events mean. For us at Elevar, events are interactions that a user can take on your website that is above and beyond a page view. We all know what page view tracking is. We look at these reports every day in Google Analytics. Uh, we look at landing page reports. We look at pages per session data. We look at uh, how people are interacting coming from paid search or paid social and what pages they're viewing and how that's impacting conversion rate and revenue. And page views are great. Events are is one level up from here. Most of not all of us have pages on our website that users can interact with above and beyond a page view. It could be something as simple as they're scrolling down the page, they're signing up for an email, they're watching a video, they're downloading a PDF, they are interacting through live chat, they are uh, clicking on an abandoned uh, exit intent uh, banner. There's millions of different events that users can take. And these events are, are really what we build into those micro conversions or micro steps into leading them down the path to purchase. Page views are great. Events really help take our, our page view and our conversion analysis one step up uh, so we can really dig in and understand what, what really is impacting our users, uh, purchase to, uh, our users' purchase path. A question that we get a lot at Elvar is, are events the same as tags? We live in Google Tag Manager and everything is called a tag, except for templates, Everything's called a tag in Google Tag Manager, uh, whether it's a Google Analytics page view tracking tag, whether it's a Facebook initiate checkout tag. For us, an event, when we say the word event, this is a unique user behavior that somebody is taking on a website and we are, we are deciding to push that particular event into that marketing channel or that data source. And for this, this particular training, we're going to be focusing just on Google Analytics and how event tracking, aka event tags work in Google Tag Manager and how it pushes data into Google Analytics for us to further uh, advance our insight analysis. What you're looking at here is a, a sample event that we have set up as a Google Analytics tag type. Let's talk a little about defining events and defining the dimensions that make up an event. Inside of Google Analytics, events live under our behavior navigation menu, which makes sense. People are doing things on a site, we, have, we associate events to that. Google currently breaks down events into event categories, event action, and event labels. And they also actually allow us to push event value to, to all of these events. But what are the, what's the definition of event category, action, and label? Well, it's subjective. For us, the way that we look at these, an event category is a big bucket. A big bucket are things like home page, product page, collection page, cart page, navigation. Those are big buckets. If we think about the product page, there are many things or actions that a user can take on a product page that all really lives within the bucket of product page. Are they clicking on additional images? Are they reading reviews? Are they watching a video? That's where we get into event actions. So watching a video, reading a review, clicking on an additional image, that is what we'd consider an event action. Event actions are really events that are going to bring it one step deeper than a, a, our big bucket of category. Here's an example of an image click. So we have category of product page and we have an event action of an image click. Let's take a look at Carry Yuma's product page. They have a wide array of product images that users are interacting with, you would think, but it's not triggering a page view. So if these, if this event tracking is not set up, then Carry Yuma does not know how many people are interacting with the product images. What product images are people clicking on the most? What product images or what types of images are driving people to convert more than others? Is it lifestyle images? Is it looping images, is it flat shot images? That's where we consider an event action. So a unique 
behavior that someone takes and then really putting the event action on steroids is adding a variable to that event action. So for example, the event action, we name an image click, but we don't want to have to create an event for every single product page. If Karyuma had 100 products on our site, we don't want to create a hundred different products, or excuse me, a hundred different tags in a Google tag manager to track every, every little click uh, on the product images. So in this case, we're, we're adding a click URL variable. So when a user is actually clicking on one of these images, not only are we saying and telling Google, Hey, someone clicked on this image. We're also defining the URL of this image. So we're able to, and Karyuma would, would be able to in bulk look at and start sorting their top images and what's, um, and how that's impacting conversion. The next step down. So we have our event category product page. That's our big bucket. We have our event action, which is a unique behavior that someone's taking that we can then apply variables to that to start getting a little bit more granular in our, in our analysis. And next we're going to break up uh, event label. So event label is a way that we look at it is we take our event actions. So which is our, would be our image clicks or different behavior interactions on a product page. And now we want to break that down even further by uh, page. For us, event label is almost always page URL. Uh, I'm going to show in our limitations of event tracking, I'm going to show why we choose to always use page URL instead of potentially letting the default tracking that events take with pages, uh, without spilling too much. Uh, we, we our focus again is on e-commerce and conversion tracking. So for us, we are breaking down event action always by page URL. The reason for that is. In Karyuma's case, we want to be able to look at across all of our product pages and break down all of the event interaction that users are taking, not only with image clicks, but potentially interacting with a size and fit guide or, or other interactions on a product page. So event category, our big bucket of a product page, home page, etc. Event action, a unique behavior that someone's taking. Event label is our page, our page URL that we are wanting to track the same behavior across all of these similar pages on our website. Let's take a look at another example. This is a product tab click. So we have an event created inside of Google tag manager. Our category is product page. Our action is tab click. So we actually want to view different behavior for people that are clicking on these different tabs. As you can see, these are not, are not triggering page views, but for direct sports, they would really benefit from seeing, okay, people that click to read reviews or click to view the sizing guide or click to view shipping returns, which one of these interactions are driving more people to purchase? For example, if our people that click on pricing, price matching, and you think we would, they were are at least reading part or all of this. Is that leading to higher conversion? People that click on shipping and returns, is that leading to higher interaction? Or people that potentially click on reviews that have no reviews, is that leading to a lower conversion rate? All of this data can really help direct sports make decisions on either making more, making some of these interactions more prominent on the page or potentially hiding that. Let's take a look at this in action. So looking at our event category breakdown, we can see we have these big buckets. Now let's actually jump into our products category. So clicking into our products category, by default, Google drops us into a products category. This doesn't do a whole lot. Now we actually need to change this and look at our event action. So our event action, this is the dimension that now we're looking in that big bucket of product page. And Google's going to show us all of the event action behavior that users are taking and the associated conversion rate for that. So we'll give this report a second to finish loading. All right. So it's loaded. So now we're seeing all of our event actions from add to cart down to some of our tap clicks. So this data is great. We can see sizing guide tap clicks. That's more than double the amount. Uh, that people are clicking interacting with shipping and returns or price matching, but we're not quite there. And get, how does this help us analyze behavior and conversion rate? We need to go to our e-commerce tab up top. 
any event that we're pushing into Google Analytics, Google is associating conversion data to these events. So now instead of just looking at the number of unique events of people clicking on it, now we can actually associate revenue, transactions, conversion rate, et cetera, to these unique events as part of a user's interaction on a product page. So now with this data, we're armed with putting this into action, potentially creating A-B tests. So should we hide different tabs that our people aren't interacting with? Should we look at improving the content of our sizing guide because our conversion rate is uh, so much lower than our description or shipping and return clicks? And now with this in hand for just this one single event that we created in Google Tag Manager, one event that's tracking across all pages, we can actually now see how this data is. So now we've seen this one product tab. So now we've seen this one event that we created in a Google Tag Manager that has one single trigger that's tracking all of this data, pushing all of this rich data into analytics that we can now use in our analysis. So the last part is just looking at our event label. So let's say we wanted to dive into our size guide and we wanted to see how this is broken down across product pages. So we'll click into our event action. And now that we're looking at our event action of size guide clicks, we can actually see how the event label is tracking all of our page URLs. So now we can actually look at our conversion rate and usage across pages. So you can see this is how we start with event category. We break down to our event action. And finally we break down to our event label, which helps us analyze a really unique behavior across all of our pages and we can analyze conversion rate differences for that.